I'm going to start off with a sea sponge, one of these, and I'm going to use some straight phthalo blue, start up in the edges, and what we're creating here is a background for a forest, a path through the forest. So I'm going to decide where my path is going to go, and I don't really want it right in the center. I think I'll just take it off a little bit. So in this area here, I'm going to leave it clear, and I think I'll just go around and kind of create my outline for that. So I want the edges the darkest because we're deep in the forest so it would be darker and it would get lighter as we go out towards the opening in the trees. I'm going to have the outer area very dark because I want to put some nice white birch trees in that area so I have to have a really dark background for them to show up and as we go out we'll put darker trees to match the lighter areas. I'm going to dab my edges so that if I decide not to frame it it will have a nice edge. This area I want a little bigger because I want to have a few more birch trees here, maybe a few smaller ones there and have my path go off this way. So each time I load my sponge with new dark paint, I'll start on my outer edge again. I don't want a whole bunch of gobs on here because we're going to paint over this. So after you dab most of the color off. You can go in towards your center on your bottom. And then dab a little bit over that again. Take off any big gobs. those gobs on the bottom. Your bottom corners will be darker as well because they're also closer in the woods where it's darker. And we can highlight out here so don't worry if you get it too dark. Okay. Oh, my palm's going to come out here and make that a little higher out here. Maybe some of these background. And again, one more time. I'm going to darken up all the way around the edges. Where right, it's deep in the woods. Okay, so I've got a little bit of black on my palette and I've put it on my sponge with with the blue on there, I didn't clean my sponge. And I'm just going to go just around the edges to darken them even more, just the very edges, to add some black so when I put my birch trees, it'll look great. Don't want gobs again, you just want some, some black here and there. I have a filbert brush with some brown and black. I'm going to sketch in my path. Now, a path 
gets narrower as it gets farther away. Black and brown. My head might get in the way here, but I want my path to kind of go off into the distance here. Maybe come this way a little. Still getting wider if it winds. It's okay if some blue comes in there. It's actually pretty. We'll put a little bit in when we highlight. Make sure your path comes right off the page. Uh, make sure your path comes right off the canvas. If I want to make my path really thin, I can turn my brush to a point like that. Now I'm going to highlight my path a little bit. Some white. I'm just going to touch areas here and there. Be a little bit lighter back here. I'll wipe most of it off my brush so I know what I'm dealing with first. Little spots here. Depending how much time you have, we're having, I'm trying to make this work out to about a two hour painting session, paint along session. But you can leave little things like that, it looks nature, that's the way things are. Rigidy spots, the light would hit more. We'll put a few stones afterwards. Don't overdo your highlights, but Add a little more lighter and touch a few more in until you're happy. And the light will be shining down through the trees. Even though it's dark in here, we're going to have some spots where the light is shining in. So you can put a few of those little spots in here too. So also while we're letting this all dry thoroughly, because we're going to put yellow on here and we don't want anything wet, we'll work down here and put a few little stones in. You can go through your black and brown on one side of your velvet brush. Go through some blue and white on the other. Put your blue and white side up. And you can just touch and make a few little stones. I'm just doing this kind of motion. Just so I'm gonna reload my brush, brought black and brown on one side, white and blue on the other. And this farther away you're gonna want the stones a little smaller. If you're not getting your highlight, just go back and touch a little more white on there. Oops. More than that. There. And you can put a few here in the grass. They're not always on the path. Okay, so now that this is all nice and dry, and I've cleaned my sponge out really well, made sure I got all the blue out of it, and I have some white and yellow on my palette. Start in the center and work my way out so that the lightest spot is in the center. And I'm going to put 
some more weight in this one. Okay. And you want that to be a little bit splotchy looking. It gives, gives a really nice effect afterwards. And we're going to gradually work our way out. Don't go down onto your path. Just go around. Okay to leave some gobs of little gobs and texture in the middle, but you want to make sure that you don't have too many big gobs out here because we're going to put trees. So just do it lightly and go right into your blue a little ways. Not all the way, just a little ways. And down here. Into my blue a little ways over here. Now, just very carefully, I'm going to put a little bit in here. Not everywhere, just coming through here and there. Okay. I didn't mean to go on my path, so I'll just wipe that off my finger. That's what's nice about when this is dry. I'm going to take a liner brush and I'm going to water down some phthalo blue. Not so runny that it'll drip, but just so it'll glide on. And I'm going to make distant trees down my path. And we'll put some more leaves on these after. So for now, start off with real small ones. Going down here. And as they get closer, they get a bit bigger. I'm going to put an evergreen here. But I'm going to have some branches coming out up here for these ones. And we'll have some back here that aren't in the path, but in the background. As they get closer, the tree trunks get thicker. And uh, as they get closer, they get bigger, you can add a little bit of brown in.
Okay, so I've darkened the edges. Now take the sea sponge and curl it up a bit and we'll touch very lightly on these trees. And don't want to go heavy back here. Just go very slowly in so that you don't take your whole center away. But you want to fill in your trees a little bit there. Gradually lighten up on it. And this time, you'll start up here. Go very light. And as we go down, push harder. Another one down here. We'll put little branches on after. We'll get the big ones on. Um, I'm going to put a little one in the front. So I'm going to push harder and lift. From the bottom, from the top down. You don't want to get them so too wide, so. And this one will be in front. After when we add our bit of white back on like that. Back here as well. Now this one leaning. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a bigger round flat brush. I'm going to load it up. I'm going to load it up to keep a nice edge on it. Right here. I'm going to put an evergreen tree. Now for the top of the evergreen tree, I just touch a few times up. Then I'm going to turn my brush this way and I'm going to just dab downward. Take most of that paint off and you want to get a bit of a... There we go. Best if you practice this on something first and get your uh, your brush working how you want it. My motto is know your brush. Know what marks your brush makes, and then try to remember it. <laughs> That's just to give a bit of an illusion of one back there. Let me put a little highlight on it. And then we'll put a little bit of white on the brush. And just highlight the side that the light would be shining on. A little bit 
too much of a highlight there. Okay. Now we'll put a few back in the background. I'll just leave a little bit of white on there. And I'll put one back in here. I'm not going to make it solid. I just want to use a smaller brush and do that over. I should have uh, went to the smaller brush. I'm just going to turn the brush up sideways, make a few little grassy little pieces of grass back there. Right here. Just by dabbing my brush up, upward. Want them back there. Don't have to make them very clear back there. With this one, we're just pushing upward instead of downward with same brush, same stroke, it's just upside down. I might even put one back there to clean that mess up I made. It's hard for me to see this way, so excuse me. I'm gonna stay back far enough that I'm out of the camera and still be able to see what I'm doing. But I'm getting used to it. And you can just keep making these as tiny and far back as you want. To count for some behind those trees as well. So this time I want the birch really close. So I'm going to start over here as far over as, as I want and go over from there and add as many as I want. So to make it close you go very close to the bottom but not right to the bottom. And that's where your trunk would start. And let that blue blend. We might have to add some blue to our brush if it doesn't blend. It's too dry. 
That's all right, dear. And we don't have to worry about what branches are forward or backwards right now. We can worry about that when we're shading. Okay, now I want a little bit of a curvy one. Beside it. I'll make a skinnier one, so I'm going to push hard to start with and lift up as I go. Go back, start up where I left off, and go down, and this time push harder as I go. Take these right when they're this close and that even though it's right up off painting. And then the leaves will cover the tops. So I'm going to put a nice little little one coming out from the bottom here. And I'm going to go down my edge. and pull it across, like that. Let it be a bit messy, that's okay. So let's start at the top. Go down the front of your tree. brush out. Same way I did it the first time, I'm just going to very carefully follow my tree down. Or just blend that line out. A sharp brush to work with. A 
how sharp I need. Load your brush. Keep it loaded nicely, but make yourself a nice sharp edge. And just come across, make those little marks. It looks really cool, like the tree's round. And that's just by blending out that line. You make a little bump or, some, or a mistake. It's really neat to have a little bump there. Sounded like I said bum, but I said a little bump there. Or you can put a little bum there if you want. But You're always making your highlight on the side of the tree that the light would be shining on. If you want a little bit more of that shadow in, you can add it any time you want. Just do the same thing, pull across in that little round. Put a little roundness in it. How you put one behind the other. Put some ba uh, branches. I've got quite a few on here, but we need some in the front. Show that the tree's got dimension. So we're going to put our black on our birch. So I have a little bit of black on my palette. First I'm going to dip the back side of my brush into the paint. And I'm going to put a few dots. Different places on my tree. Not in a pattern. And then I'm going to turn my brush around. And just go through it to one side or the other. All different. Try not to make them the same. While the black is on your brush, you can go into the other spots and make some little marks. Um, the odd little spot, you want to put your brush on and twirl it to make a little round spot. So, between these 
little marks. Pull up our tree. Just pull a few inches at a time and then stop because otherwise your little dots will dry and you know, let it move the paint at a time so that your black paint doesn't dry. You have to excuse me, I have just got over a really bad cold, or I shouldn't say got over yet, but I'm working on it. And we just... Keep going up. Kind of a little mess there. You don't have to worry about going off your tree a little because we've darkened it up up where it's yellow. You should be careful not to go into it. But you can do a little, uh, don't go straight across. I have it a few spots and a few spots it's fine. But we want a little bit of a curve in our stroke. Almost like a little smile like that. But I'm exaggerating it right now. But it gives the look of roundness to our tree. brush on and twist and it doesn't have to be round or anything like you want some different shape marks these are places on birch trees some of them that branches have come off now I have a little black on my paint I'm just gonna go up and put some little marks on my little branches and I'm gonna go on to um, well, I'm working on this tree, another way of doing it in which we could add into it for some little thin lines. Take a liner brush. You need to add water when using a liner brush. And go through it. And you can make some little, you can make some little marks crossed here and there. It really adds a nice little finish. Some thin lines. So those are the two types of marks we want on our tree. These little ones. And just almost dab something on them. Uh -huh. Don't worry too much if you overdo a little spot here and there because you can always come back in with a bit of white after. This one I'm going to twirl, a little circle. And we'll go. Clean the end of your brush once in a while. You know, if it's uh, got an accumulation of paint on it. And then just deepen up your birch tree. Turn your brush around. See, as I say, don't worry about if it goes off a little bit in these real dark areas. It's not going to show.
few little spots on there. Now I want to get my liner brush. And I want to put some of those nice little... Okay, by just touching very lightly. Going back, going across with a little bit of a curve to your stroke. We'll do the same thing here. We'll start with the back tree first. Now this is just for a paint along. When I'm actually painting a birch tree, I do, it takes a long time and detail very carefully but when you're if you want a nice effect quickly this is an idea this I made a round spot so I'm going to fill it right in with dark by just put touching my brush on it and tw twirling your brush and it doesn't have to be perfectly round then I'm going to add a little bit of shadow under that round part just to show where it is. You can use your finger. Fine line work. I've got a little bit of phthalo blue and yellow on my palette and it's going to combine to make kind of a, a green but I don't want a solid green. I want the blue and the yellows to stay separate and where they do mix and make a green that's fine. And I'm going to very lightly touch on some of these out here to start with. Just to add my final little bit of leaves. more of a yellow tinge this time. I'm going to touch some 
of the ground up the path where it's showing in the light out there. And as it gets closer in, we're going to add a little bit more blue now because we're a little bit darker in the shadow. But we're still going to have those combinations of colors just a little bit darker. And we're just going to touch here and there. Don't cover up everything because you see got some nice dark colors just to add a little detail. Pretty. There. And I think that's enough on that side. Go over the edge of your path because that's how nature is. And a little yellow pretty thing there is nice. And maybe something around these rocks where the light's shining through. I'm going to come over here and do the same thing. This. Very careful not to like make it solid. You want to make it look like plants with the light shining. There we go. I'm going to leave all this dark back here. See a little spot right here where maybe... Oh, there's my blue jay calling for a few minutes. And maybe right there. Okay. Um, Just to finish everything off. And now I'm going to put some dark blue leaves on my... I want lots on my brush this time. Lots of blue. Gobby. And then touch it in the yellow. Leave it gobby. We're just going to... Just touch a few leaves on these. We don't want a, a lot. There's already all kinds of background things going on. On your edges. Little spots where I don't really like the way it looks. And I'd say that's about done. I want a little bit around the bottom of my trees. Just, just set them down in. So now I think I might add a little bit of color by adding some red wild flowers. So for the close up, I'm going to take a small flat brush. I'm going to load it up with some crimson or bright red, whatever you like. And I'm just going to make some indications. Like I'm not going to worry too much about the shapes. Just push here and there. It'll look like some flowers. And the farther away they get, the smaller you want them. So. Maybe a few close ones here. And we'll put a few little stems on those too. And all I'm doing is just really just loading up the end of my brush and just holding it up. And you can push on it like, and it makes a little, you can, Farther away, the less detail we have. So this is just an option. If we have time at the art center when we do this one, we'll put these on. And if we don't, you can do it at home. Watch the video. Good. Now that just adds some color. It's kind of pretty. Now, once you get used to painting, show you something you can do is you know you can put some petals and some details on these flowers very easily things like that um, maybe one like so it's all different 
what you have time for, what level of painting you're at, how much detail you want to put in. For the flowers in the background, you can take a little, little sea sponge and set some little spots back there, very touch, very lightly, the further back you get. You want them to almost be disappear. There you go, just adds a little color through. So here's our finished painting. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know by liking and subscribing below. Um, for the people at the Art Center who do this, I hope this practice video helps. And happy painting, everybody.